Greetings and good day. This is Christopher Fries here at Fries Forge. Let's take a look at my shop. I'm feeling a little under the weather today, and my shop happens to be incredibly clean at the moment. So what better time than now to do a shop tour? So starting from the left of my shop, my drill press. This thing, uh, it's all right. For the money that I paid for it, which wasn't very much, I certainly have got my money's worth out of it and it's still going strong. It's just a master craft, cheap, cheap thing. But got a lot of stuff on it that's pretty useful. This table here swivels, raises up and down. Of course, the pressy of the press. This little guy here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, uh, there's markings to show you just how deep you're going. It's like uh, a quarter inch. So if you want to go down a quarter inch, you know how far a quarter inch is. You just watch this. It's, it's pretty useful. I definitely recommend one of these. This is a uh, drill press vise, and it's got little slots on here that fit very well in the little slots that are on this table. Very useful. If you want to hold something in place and you want to hold it well, this is, this is great. And here I just keep a, you know, kind of a random assortment of things. These are all things that are going to be going up once I build this shelf. This guy is awesome. Uh, it's not the best belt grinder in the world, but for the money, it's, uh, it's definitely right up there. $700 I think I paid for. This is a Grizzly's 2x72 belt grinder. It's a one horsepower motor, 110 volt single phase. It has a motor speed of 107, 1,725 rotations per minute. And this gives the belt 6, 3,600 feet per minute and a wheel speed of 1,725 rotations per minute. So there you go, there's a thing you know now. <laughs> I've got a little wire wheel on the side here. This, uh, I find having it nice and open and, and everything is very helpful, very useful. I got more stuff, some belts and things like that. Uh, up here, power bar. I got this from Costco and it works really well. Um, lots of different little attachments. It's got little, or lots of, lots of different plugs, sorry. Lights that I can turn on or turn off independently of the power which I can turn on or turn off. This vise is, uh, is, is, is not too bad. Uh, Canadian Tire Mastercraft. It works fairly well. I can do this which is very handy, especially if you're doing anything to do with uh, knives or something like that. Having that option is uh, very helpful. I am very happy with this vise. I don't beat on it because I don't expect it will stand up to stand up to the beating. I have another vise, which is an older vise. Um, I've beaten the crap out of that thing and I've got it literally glued together. But it still works. Some hooks. Uh, moving right along here. This door here goes into the other side of this building. Here I just keep all of my metals that are to be used. Uh, mostly mild steels, things like that are here. The cursed stainless. Uh, some other little. I keep down here is my fucking uh, bucket. bucket. My rack. My rack, I, I like it okay. I intend to make something better in the future, but this does the job for now, for the time being. Uh, I'll probably replace it if it breaks. Keep my tongs here on this, uh, on this bar that I've just got screwed and uh, supported to the front. I keep all of my hammers here. I've got, how many hammers do I have? One, two, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hammers, 17, 18, 2 on my anvil. So, uh, yeah, a total of 18 hammers. I've got some more steels in here. Uh, this is mostly carbon steel, odd shaped stuff that just looks crappy sitting out in the open. So, keeps it tidy. If I'm working on one thing and one thing only, I'm waiting for it to heat up in the forge. Besides from general tidying, I tend to find myself bored. Uh, so this is helpful. This is just a piece of wood that uh, was part of a previous stand, and I use it for practicing throwing bow shuriken. Works pretty well. I like to draw little things on here, stuff like that. Work through ideas in my head for shapes of stuff that I'm going to be doing. This is where my chain is growing. I do a link every time I light the fire. Since I've made that video. Yeah, three. Three new links since I've made my uh, chain of progression. And the stainless steel really, uh, really didn't work and I have found out why. Thank you very much guys for your assistance with that. A charcoal forge. It, it is serving me very well. I like it. I intend to make a coal forge, but I currently don't have any coal. I want to, you know, I want to go up north and, and get a ton of coal. There was apparently a old coal mine there, and though I had thought that you couldn't get coal out of there anymore, it might be possible to get coal from there. I have to find out more out about that. Uh, this little hanging spot for my axes and probably the most important thing in a blacksmith shop is a fire extinguisher. Literally playing with fire, it's important to have a fire extinguisher, more than one preferably, although I only have one at this time. I keep it nice and close to my, to my forge, to where the heat is, so that way if uh, something starts going, I'm right there and I can uh, save the place from burning down. Many, many blacksmith shops have burned down over the years, and a simple fire extinguisher may have saved a lot of them. Valuable lessons in such unfortunate catastrophes. Here is my propane forge. I've got it mounted up on a this little door I made. I've got it mounted up on a, uh, what is this for? This is a stand for a grinder. I picked that up at uh, Canadian Tire. I, boast, I buy most of my stuff at Canadian Tire because Canadian Tire sells cheap stuff. I'm not made of money. But this works pretty well. Um, this was, I think I paid $500 for this forge. Uh, worth every penny. It works very well. This here controls my air. This here switches from one burner to two burners. Very handy to have. The cording that came with it, the, uh, the cording? It's not a cord. <laughs> the tubing that came with it was very inadequate. So I have since upgraded that door in the back which is also very useful. Long pieces are no problem. And the whole thing I've got currently connected to just a little 30 pound propane bottle. This is my first anvil and if you can't tell it's railroad track. I've actually got it held down by railroad spikes. The railroad spikes don't do very well for holding down anvils, at least not in the current configuration which I have. So I have a bunch of uh, screws that are all screwed in here to help stop the thing from moving, but nonetheless you still have to go by and pound them all back down again. It's kind of a pain. But 
it worked well enough for when I had only that. So, right here is my old vise. Uh, I still use it, and I use this one. I have this one over here because I have my torch on this bench as well. So this is kind of my uh, hot bench, I guess you could call it, and the other one is my uh, finishing bench. Even though the other one, the other bench used to be my hot bench and is in uh, much worse shape. In here I keep some uh, files and my drifts, chisels, things like that in this one, files in this one here. I like having the ammo cans. Ammo cans are great. I love them. My toolbox, various things in that. It's uh, pretty much full. I, I need more toolbox space. Uh, over there is my oxyacetylene. And down there is another little toolbox with stuff for oxyacetylene. And uh, my, I haven't quite said fuck it to it yet bucket. <laughs> There's some good stuff in there. And some probably should be moved over to the bucket bucket stuff in there, but the bucket bucket's full. I'm gonna maybe dive into that in future, but uh, yeah, that's another thing for later. Oh, down there is my um, Kydex pressing sheets. I like the Kydex sheets, they work well. Now it's hard to see, but up here is the shelf that I made and those shelving brackets. If you hadn't seen how I made these shelving brackets, Take a look in the description of this video. Actually, I have a card popping up right now, and you can check out just how I made these shelving brackets. I'm really happy with them. This is my anvil. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Without me, my anvil is useless. Without my anvil, I am useless. This is where the magic happens. I really like this anvil. I had I had at one point had it set in my head that I wanted a petting hot sample. That may still be true. I may still want one, but even if I get one, I'm not going to be getting rid of this one. I've really gotten, I've really come to like it. I've got it all held down, chained down, and tensed down onto this stand that I made. If you haven't seen the video on how I made that stand, uh, there should be a card popping up right about now take a look at just how I made this anvil stand. I made this anvil stand to be the best anvil stand you could possibly make out of wood. I like it. I don't think I could have made a better one. I've got it all banded together and bolted together and these here on the side, the turnbuckles are also bolted in to the anvil stand. And on the side of it I've got a little bit of a cloth that I'm currently using to hang my most common hammers from it. This is the second most common hammer that I use. Uh, this was made for me by a, another YouTube blacksmith and I can't pronounce her name. I am so sorry. Tilburn? I, I, I'm sorry. I don't know. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description of this video. On this side is my absolute favorite hammer. This hammer was made by Joey Vandersteeg and Alex Steele. They worked together to create this masterpiece of metal and wood. I really like this hammer. This is my 95% of the time hammer. This is my this other hammer is my 4% of the time hammer, and all of those other ones are my 1% of the time hammers. This one has done so much work for me and will do so much more. I absolutely love it. Love it. And that is a convenient spot to have my hot cut. It is my, I'd say, most used hardy, hardy tool. I tend to make a better one serving me well enough for the time being. Well there we are, that is my shop. That's what I have to work in. And that's what you see when you watch my videos. This is my little happy place. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions for me, or if you have any suggestions as to how I might set my shop up a little better, I'm eager to know what they are. I love optimizing and customizing and 
moving things around and seeing what works and what doesn't work. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a neat process. This whole shop is a living, breathing entity. I have everything set up how I think it is best, but what I think and what is are commonly not the same. So if you think there's something that could be put somewhere else and, and, and better laid out, please let me know in the comments. I'm eager to know what they are. I'm very much learning. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like comment if you think there's anything that I could do to improve. Don't forget to subscribe and may the force serve you well.